Hello, good morning, friends. Welcome back to your favorite channel, Code One Digest. In this video, we will discuss what is Memento design pattern, where to use Memento design pattern in our project. I'll also show you the Java code implementation of Memento design pattern, and at the end, we will discuss the benefit of Memento design pattern. So stay tuned till end of the video. Friends, in the previous video, we discussed about mediator design pattern. Can you explain what is mediator design pattern and where to use it? Please reply your answer in the comment section. And if you have not seen the previous video, I'll recommend you to go and see that video. That's very important video and design pattern. The link is provided on your screen and also given in the description section. And just to recall, the mediator design pattern enables the decoupling of objects by introducing a middle layer. So, for more information, please go and see the previous video. Friends, before we proceed in this video, I want you to subscribe my channel to grow Code One Digest family. Friends, I am creating a lot of quality contents for you, but I am not getting subscribers. I want you to like, share, and subscribe my channel so that I can grow Code One Digest family. Thank you. All right, let's get started. So, let's start with the Memento design pattern. Memento design pattern is a type of behavioral design pattern that lets you save and restore the previous state of an object without revealing the detail of its implementation. A memento is an object that stores a snapshot of internal state of another object. This pattern allows you to save the internal state of an object to restore it later. Let's take an example. In your application is growing, progressing, you may want to save a checkpoint in your application and restore it back to the previous state if anything goes wrong, right? This pattern defines three rules for an object. Originator. Originator is an object whose state will be saved. Memento. Memento is another object that saves the state of originator object. And third is a caretaker. Caretaker manages the timing of saving the state saved by the memento and if needed uses the memento to restore the state of the originator. Let's discuss an example now. Imagine that you are creating a text editor app. In addition to simple text editing, your editor can format text, insert inline images, etc. At some point, you decide to let user undo any operation carried out on a text. For this implementation, your app should record the states of all the objects and save it in some storage. Later, when user decides to revert an action, then app fetches the latest snapshot from the history and use it to restore the state of all the objects. Friends, I have prepared a code snippet for the Memento design pattern. Let me show you the code and then I'll run this code and give you the demo of Memento design pattern. Friends, this code is available in my GitHub repository. You can download and play with it. The link of GitHub repository is shown on the screen and also shared in the description section of this project. Okay, now let me show you what I have done. So I have a package Memento where I have all my classes. Then, as I said, in Memento, we have three component, three actors in the Memento design pattern. One is originator, this is our context. This is our memento object, which keeps a state of originator object. And caretaker, caretaker maintain the life cycle of all the states. So let's see the originator first. Originator is our context. It has a string called state. And then it has method to set a state. We are setting the state here. And in this set method, we are also saving that state to memento. Then we have a method called get state. It will give you the state and save a state to memento. In this method, we are creating an object of new memento, passing the state and saving it. Then we have another method get state from memento. So we can get the state from memento and return it. Then we have a memento. This is where we are actually saving the state of an object. We have a string state. 
we are we are having a constructor of memento where we are initializing this state through this constructor we have a get state method where we are returning this state right now let's see a caretaker in caretaker we have a list of memento objects so this is where actually we are having the records of all our states all our mementos then we have method here add in add we are adding we are passing the state and we are saving that state to this list and get state here in this get method we are passing a index and we are returning the memento object from this list based on that index i have also written a test class let's see how the test class looks like so in this test class i am initializing one originator object this is our context then I am initializing one caretaker object and then I am calling caretaker.add method where I am setting a new state. I am saying originator.set state, state 1, then state 2, state 3. This method returns me an object of memento. This method returns me an object of memento and that's what we save that object into our list. This add method add, this add method adding that state adding that memento state to this list right so we are doing that we are saving all this state as we are changing the originator object we are keep saving this state into caretaker and here we at this moment we are printing what is my current state and then uh, i want to revert the state of my originator object to second state so what i am doing is originator dot set state caretaker dot get one dot get state so this get method takes an index and it returns an object of memento and memento is having a state string that is what we are getting from this method get state and we are setting that state into originator set state and this is that is how our originator revert back to the second state let me run this and show you how that works compiling the code yeah there you go so it says when we are saying when we are saving the state one two three four it says saving state one two three four and so on and then we are printing what is my current state it says my current state is four now i am reverting to a second state so after saving i am printing that saving the state to state two then my current state becomes state two so this is a very simple example this is a very simple implementation of memento pattern where you keep saving the state of your originator object and you can revert back anytime you want to to the previous state right okay friends the very first question comes to our mind where to use memento design pattern so you can use memento design pattern when you want to let some info in in the object available by another object when you want to create a snapshot of the states of an object and when you need do redo undo feature in your application that time memento pattern can be used right so what are the benefits of the memento design pattern it provides you ability to restore an object to its previous state it stores the object state without compromising the encapsulation and it provides a recovery mechanism in case of failure it provides a way to maintain history of an object's life cycle, right? Okay, friends, now let me summarize what we learned in this video. We understood what is memento design pattern. We saw a real world example of memento design pattern. We also saw Java code implementation of memento design pattern. And we also saw use cases of memento design pattern. And at the end, we discussed the benefit of memento design patterns, right? Friends, let me know if you have already used the memento design pattern in your project or seen a scenario where this pattern can be very useful. Please provide your answer in the comment section. In the next video, we will cover interpreter design pattern. We will learn what is interpreter design pattern. We will see the usage of interpreter design pattern. We will see Java implementation of interpreter design pattern 
and we will understand the benefits of interpreted design, design pattern. So stay tuned for the next video and please subscribe to this channel to grow our Code One Digest family. Friends, I request you to subscribe Code One Digest channel for the latest programming and technology related videos. I am putting a lot of efforts in creating this contents. So please help me growing the Code One Digest family. If you like this video, so give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, so please subscribe to this channel for the more interesting videos. Click on the bell icon for the latest video notification so that you don't miss any video from us. And do not forget to share this video with all your friends and colleagues. This is very useful information for students, beginners and software engineers. Thank you.